say, okay, here's your disc back, and you give them another. They don't read it or anything like that. They store it away for you. That's in case that one day uh, rain damage, um, a house problem, uh, somebody comes in and uh, smashes the disc that you're riding on. Uh, uh, you know, any type of disaster, anything like that could happen to the machine. If you have spent years of your life building up all the information on the machine, and then have it wiped out, you're back to where we are right now. You don't have any of it on there. And you'll see real soon after you start doing this that there's a lot of information you've got to go from where you started to get it on the computer. And all that effort, you don't want to ever have to repeat again. Okay? So if you occasionally will take a copy, put it on a, uh, on a, a disc, and we'll show you how the disc works on it. And you can store it at your house, but if you feel more safe, you might store it off the site. Now, big companies, by the way, the reason why I'm telling you that, that a lot of people, when they start getting PCs, they forgot what big companies do. Big companies that are, are in business, large businesses, they will take and they'll ship to another branch their copy of uh, their tapes of all the backups on, that, on their system. And daily they back it up, and then uh, weekly they ship it out to an off-site, and then monthly they ship it all the way out of, uh, like, a out of state, they don't want, just in case something happened to Georgia at all, they don't want to be lost in case even if they aren't there, somebody else can pick it up. So they don't even keep it. They they don't even keep their tapes here in Georgia. They ship them to other places. We ship to New, Newark, New Jersey in general. Okay. That's just to let you know that when people started putting PCs on here, they forgot that there is these procedures that companies have found that they had to do in order to protect their data just in case after and 95% of the time nothing happens but once in a while it comes along and something happens to it and they realize that this is so valuable that they cannot go back with the manpower now you won't have that problem so you don't have to go to the expense either don't go to more expense than it's worth but if you think that it's worth it then once a month once a year whatever it be keep what you've done and put it somewhere else okay I don't always do it myself but I do keep it in different parts of the house that may not be good if something happens in the house, but uh, anyway. Okay. Let's go to. Now, go ahead and ask questions as you want to. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and go into DOS and uh, explain that so we can go ahead and play with the machine. The very first thing I, I decided to do is uh, tell you how do you turn on and off these machines. Uh, I think that's a good place to start. <laughs> that's a necessary one. Um, during this part, you mentioned earlier we were going to cover what the different pieces of equipment were. Yes. Uh, I can do that ahead of this, or I can do it with turning it off and on. Uh, basically, I had an overview of the hardware as the next piece, and then I s decided, well, maybe I should uh, at least uh, hit one item since I was talking about security problems or uh, uh, loss problems of what can happen. And that's when you turn on the machine. If you have a hard disk, and a hard disk, by the way, is a disk that uh, if you hear that motor running, the plate is always running at a very fast rate. And you don't take it out and, and uh, carry it with you. It stays with the machine. While a floppy disk, you take out, and you can. this is where your software is. This is just like a piece of paper written to it. It's written in memory on magnetic information on there. As this, as this thing turns, as the disk turns, the head actually puts the information like a tape recorder and records it onto this disk. That's where the information comes from. Okay. This is called a floppy disk because it flops. Okay. And a hard disk, of course, is stationary and is usually a very strong piece of metal, magnetized piece of metal. It runs at a very high rate and, so, and is not removable. Okay. It also, the difference is that a floppy generally, can, uh, this type of floppy, would handle, say, 360K, 360,000 bytes of information. If you want to figure that out, uh, 360,000 characters, if you want to call it that way, approximately. Okay? Now, a hard disk, in comparison to that, could hold 20 million. Okay? 20 million, not 300,000. So if you divide 300,000, how many of these can you put on that? So if you back up one of these, how many floppies did it take you to do it? An awful lot of them. You'll find out 20, 30, or 40 floppies to back up a hard drive. Everything is on. Everything is on. Well, unless if it's full. If yeah. it's not full, you don't have much. Well, don't you have to get full? Yes. Well, I, this thing's at, uh, this is when I had to take stuff off of it. It's got 20 meg. But 
I have a lot of things that are redundant that I probably should have taken off anyway. And you get sloppy as like house cleaning. <laughs> you, you leave things in there you probably shouldn't leave in there. But you can't put in another hard disk. Oh yeah, you could. If you want more, you could add more. They have them, by the way, they have them uh, a, year, a few years ago, like even a year or two ago, you'd hear common 10, 10 megabytes, okay, which was a big deal about a year ago. Then it became 20 megabytes, and that's a big deal, and that's what most people have. Well, the one that's in this one, 30 megabytes, okay? Three times what it was uh, just a couple of years ago is in that one. This one had 20, so this one had 10 more megs than this one has. Terry, would you talk about 10 megs as opposed to 20 million uh, bytes? Well, million is a meg, so 20 meg is 20 million. Okay. And 30 million is 30 meg, which is 30 million bytes. So if you can figure out, put all the zeros out there, you'll find out how many thousands of bytes you can actually write, which is an awful lot of data. For example, the King James Bible, from cover to cover, only requires uh, 4 million bytes. That's 4 megs. The whole Bible, everything that's in there. But when you compress it, which is what you do a lot of times with these things, you get more room. That means that you take letters that are similar yet you want it to come back, you can actually give a little code in there that actually, you don't have to write the whole Bible, yet you get all the Bible in there. Like, for example, if you knew the was in the sentence three times, the, the, the is the best way to go, then why do I say the, the, the? Why don't I put a little, a little uh, symbol or a pseudo code that says the stands for one, one character, this one character. Anytime I see this character, it means the. So instead of saying, type it T-H-E, which is three letters, I can type one letter, and I can say this one letter happens three times, so that would save me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters, which is two characters. I can say two, this. So that really compresses it. Now, uh, as a result, the King James Bible, for example, when they compress it, and they didn't really compress it hard, they compressed it some, is down to two megs, two million bytes. So that's saying that out of the the, of this disk, if you left the King James Bible on the system, it would eat up basically two thirtieths of your entire amount of memory left. Mm -hmm. Okay? But if you wanted to, you could take it out and bring it on a floppy. You could get rid of it, erase it, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just memory. You don't have to leave it there. It doesn't have to be there. Yeah. And it can be pulled off, or you keep keep it on your, you know, back it up somewhere else and leave it backed up and never put it on there. It doesn't have to be there. Terry, it, uh, this may be ambiguous, and from what you're saying, a floppy disk, but it would take six or seven floppy disks to put the whole Bible on? Yes, it does. It takes seven at two minutes compressed. Okay. Seven, seven floppies. Well, let me ask another question, because we were talking about this earlier today. Uh, if you took an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper mm -hmm. and put one character in every screen, Fill up that entire piece of paper with one character in every slot. Okay, the whole, whole piece of paper in it. Sure. Okay. How many, uh, maybe that's not a fair question, but how many pages of information <coughs> would uh, say a floppy disk? If you were, you know. That's easy to do. Basically, if you think about it, on an 8.5 by 11, you've got 80 lines long. Let's just take a look at that. And here's how we can do it. If you want to figure out your memory and you want to calculate, do you have enough memory? You used to be worried about that when it was 10 megs and 5 megs in memory like that, you sit there and you're worried about it. When you started the new technology getting here, you're having 80 megs. There's even some out here now with PCs over 100 megs worth of disk. That's more than the major companies had by the government uh, only a few years ago. The major industries had to the whole to the whole cell. So you get an idea. But let's take a look at that one. You said basically that would be 80 characters a line. Okay. And there's usually what uh, 60 characters, 60 uh, lines on a on a page, 66, or write it 66, 60. so let's say 60 around it. Okay, 0, 0, 48. Okay, there's, that means 4,800 characters per page. Okay, now if that's per page, and you said that uh, there are 360,000 characters can be stored on a floppy, then it's 48, I'll call it to zero, 48 into this number right here, which is approximately 100 pages, a little less, like 90 some pages, of a full documented type, non-compressed 
letter. So you get a hundred hundred pages. Okay. On a plot. On a plot. Yeah, now remember, about. remember, when you have a page, if you look at a page, you'll find out that more likely you you have margins. You have margins, mm -hmm. and another thing, you have tabs. When you want to space out five places right here, you say tab, right? Now, if you do space, 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 space for five spaces, yes, it takes up those spaces, and that would be part of your memory. But if you put tab and it starts here, then you've taken one character to represent all those. So, guess what you're better to do? It's better to use tabs if you're trying to conserve memory. I was interested in this book said you can get 250 pages on floppy, 7,000 pages on a hard disk. Yeah. Uh, how do they figure their pages? Basically, well, their pages. Say, but yeah. yeah. That's that's how you're having to figure. They're figuring that you aren't going to have every character of on text. of text on things because you're going to have places like spaces, and you're going to have tab positions. Yeah. And so when you figure it out, you're usually when you've got a letter, just take any letter or any page of a book, you'll find out that the normal page is less uh, right at fifty percent filled. So we're saying that if it's fifty percent filled, then that would be two hundred pages. Okay, it's fifty percent used. Pages just sort of means something to you right now. Right, it means that to you now. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, when you start getting the feel, it'll even feel reversed. Mm -hmm. You'll get sitting there thinking, "Well, I'm total quantity," because even with pages, I can now compress this, and how much do I get out of it? If I compress, it depends on how what I wrote. If I wrote the same character over and over again, many many times, like all the spaces in here, mm -hmm. then I can maybe uh, eliminate all those with two or three characters. And I can take the whole page and make the whole page only about three characters long. Three to five, especially if it's a menu. Like, for example, this turned out a menu. It said one uh, print name. Okay, and that you put your name in here. And it said two print address, you put your address in here. And three, it said uh, your street number. Okay, and that was your page. If that's all that's in your page, then you probably can write this thing with just those extra number of characters, and all of a sudden this thing is totally wrong. So you have to figure out what a page is. Mm -hmm. Well, when you say compress, is that what you're talking about? No, this is not even compressed. Well, when, when you compress, it takes like letters. A good compression technique, when you're really hurting for space, will take letters and look at them. And if you were a pull, that page that you said had a character on every one of those positions. And it was completely filled, just like you said, 80 by 60, everything perfect. How many of those letters do you think are going to repeat themselves? Any of them. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it now substitute a token. That's what they do. They say, I'll take a token for a word. I'll create out of this page that I'm going to build a little table. This is really compressing it now. I build a little table, and I say, every time I see the word the, I'm going to use this token. Uh, let's say, call it a special character. Okay? So now, that one character represents a word shorthand, basically. Computer shorthand. Okay? And then it says, you have some big... What are the most commonly used words in this whole thing? The, uh, uh, and, 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 and other things. The bigger the word, the more likely, the better the token, because that token then represents five characters or ten characters. So to write this on a, a thing, all of a sudden you may have only 30 or 40 tokens in the system here, and it only takes, uh, you know, a very few to represent the whole thing. Now that's when you are not using text. That's when you're starting to compress things and make things, um, meaning that if you typed it out and said print this file without something to uncompress it, it's going to be garbage. You aren't even able to read it. Now I've got someone here we can compress and you can see that, but when you print it, it doesn't even look like your data anymore because the system doesn't know how you compressed it, so it doesn't know how to uncompress it. So what does it send? It sends characters to the uh, printer and the printer doesn't know what you're talking about because it sends a token. It sends a token instead of the word. Okay. So what you have to do anytime you compress it, you have to uncompress it before you can print it. So but compression it's available. Is, um, compression is shorthand. Mm -hmm. You're using one character or to represent more than one character. But you'll find out based on what your requirements are, you could never compress and you'll never run out of uh, problems based on what you're saying. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's, that's good. That's that, good to understand, though. Yeah, but if you see, because if you think that you're going to be running out of space, like I was here, all I have to do to gain more space is compress. Mm -hmm. And I've got, I've got 
loads of things that I can compress. So if I really wanted to keep it, I'd just say, hey, I'll just compress it.